Making headlines tonight, emergency surgery for a driver, 23 hurt in a smash up of two minibuses. A PSV official asking not to pass judgment on today's accident. An import-export bank to be soon set up. And coming up in sports, the Wendy's white ball captain Nicholas Puran steps down. The CBC News Night headlines are brought to you with the compliments of Courtesy Garage Limited, celebrating 100 years of legendary service, legendary performance. Broadcasting from our studios in the Pine St. Michael, this is CBC News Night, starting now. I'm Shane Jones, leading the news at 7. A minibus driver had to undergo emergency surgery as more than 20 people were injured in a horrific mass casualty incident this morning in St. James. The latest update we received here at the CBC is that police are still awaiting news on the well-being of the driver and others who had to receive medical treatment. However, this morning panic set in around the country as news of what transpired began to circulate. The tranquil early morning atmosphere on Prospect Main Road, St. James, was abruptly interrupted this morning around 6.23. This video footage from a home security camera has been in heavy rotation on social media today with thousands viewing the exact moment these two minibuses servicing the Spikestown route collided. Traffic was diverted as police from the Northern Division were quickly on the scene as the mass casualty incident protocol was triggered. Police Public Affairs and Communications Officer Acting Inspector Rodney Innes said they received a call about the accident at the Whole Town Police Station around 625. He said that a number of persons were hurt and the road was completely blocked. Now, we initiated a response from the police and the traffic department. The motorcyclists obviously got here first, and they got here within 15 minutes of it being reported to us. Um, other teams responded uh, to deal with the traffic diversions and whatnot, and we were told at the point in time that there were a number of people who were injured. Um, we responded and confirmed that the incident did occur. And from my investigations, it, it showed it was two minibuses which were reportedly traveling in opposite directions. Um, we wouldn't get any details of the identity or the registration of the minibuses. What we will tell you is a total of 23 persons uh, were reported injured with various injuries that came to the information of the police officers during our investigations. And that immediately triggered a mass casualty protocol, uh, which would involve the police, the fire, ambulance, the Barbados Defense Force, a response from all those personnel. Fifteen officers of the Barbados Police Service, two fire tenders with nine firefighters, 30 people from the Barbados Defense Force, seven ambulances, and four members of the roving response team responded to the accident to assist the 23 injured people. Nine of which were taken to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital by ambulance. Of the nine taken there, one was a driver of one of the minibuses who was reported the most serious of the injuries. He has leg injuries. He was seen by the medical personnel here and he went off by QEH. And there are two other persons reported to have serious injuries as well. So they are part of the nine that went to the QEH. Ten other persons were taken to the Bradford Tate Polyclinic via their pool together and sent via transport board bus to, the, to seek medical attention there. The on-scene triage was stood up from 8.20 a.m. to around 10. And on the heels of this morning's mass casualty, one of the representative bodies for the public service vehicle industry has made a call for the public to avoid casting blame on any of the parties involved. Communications Information and Marketing Officer of the Alliance Owners of Public Transport, Mark Haynes, says people need to let investigations continue and desist from making reckless comments. He made the appeal during an interview with CBC News as he expressed best wishes to all affected by the ordeal. Please do not go about saying that this PSV or that PSV is wrong. Let me make that unequivocally clear for the record. That is not my remit, and it should not be the remit of Barbados by extension. You were not there. 
you would have seen clippings, I would have seen clippings. I may draw my conclusion, which may not be overly correct, and that because that is not my call. I wish to sympathize with those commuters and those and other persons who were hurt in this accident this morning. I wish them well, and I know each person has relatives, and they're going to feel it one way or the other. We are, we are Barbadians, we are people, and we have, we have to be sympathetic. And with Christmas approaching and more traffic expected on the roads, Mr. Haynes wants all road users to be alert and move with due care and attention when conducting their business. An export-import bank will soon be set up in Barbados. That's according to Minister of Industry, Innovation, Science and Technology, Davidson Ishmael. He told the export award ceremony an export credit agency would be part of the development. The minister said memoranda of understanding have already been signed by the stakeholders. I'm therefore equally pleased to disclose that my government has engaged the India Exim Bank and Africa Exim Bank to guide the process of setting up the export credit agency that will utilize cutting edge technology. The Indian Exim Bank will provide technical assistance while securing of the security of funding for the bank would fall under the Africa Exim Bank. MOUs were signed with both organizations as well as a letter of intent with the India Exim Bank. And before awards were presented, the minister said the initiative would help local importers and exporters using financial technology. The export credit agency will be a full-fledged Exim bank and would fund loans up to Barbados $1 million and anything over will be referred to a development bank once funding from any of the commercial banks could not be secured. Loan guarantees will be also offered through that same development bank. A six-member contingent from the Indian Exim Bank will be visiting Barbados from next week, as you would have heard from the CEO earlier, to begin the feasibility study that will lay the framework for the structure of the export credit agency. There are fresh efforts to strengthen trade and business relations between Barbados and Scotland. It has come with the start of a strategic trade mission at the Hilton Barbados, being spearheaded by Invest Barbados. Here's Ryan Broom. In his remarks at the start of the Scotland Trade and Investment Mission to Barbados, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Kerry Simmons said it would be important to build linkages to assess the needs of each country and the business interest on the other side. However, he identified one key area where Scotland can lend its assistance soonest, in the area of Barbados's renewable energy national thrust. The reality is that as we map out our way forward, one of the areas that we must now embrace is onshore and offshore wind. And with respect to the offshore wind, all of the available technologies, whether fixed or floating, um, are available for, for, for discussion and pursuit. We have 16 times our land space in terms of our ocean space. And therefore, we want to make the most of that. We have done the wind studies. We've identified parts of the island, especially to the north of the island, which are deemed to be ideal. And as far as I understand it, within the top 10 um, locations to be found on planet Earth for investment in wind. And Minister Simmons says since Scotland has been able to record achievements in the area of wind so far, he believes it should be easier for the two countries to forge an alliance. He also identified another key area of potential cooperation. We have the obvious need and you, you folks have the obvious capacity, experience and expertise. Um, the digital services one is one also that is near and dear to my heart. I served as a former tourism minister and I must tell you again, Scotland was the beneficiary of a little bit of data analytics that we had to import into the island in order to look after the interest of this tourism product which is so critical to Barbados. So I would be the happiest camper in the world if we were able to build out more expertise and more capacity on the digital services end. Also addressing the opening was Barbados High Commissioner to the United Kingdom, Milton Innes. He sees the mission as a continuation of the strong links Barbados has long held with the United Kingdom. He said it was not the first time Barbados had engaged Scotland through its town Renfrewshire. This is the third trade and investment mission with the Renfrewshire Business Network. 
I recall my visit to Scotland with the CEO of Invest Barbados, Ms. Kay Ann Greenwich, and the enthusiasm that pervaded that reception about doing business in Barbados. Subsequent to that first visit, I have participated in a number of meetings with the Renfrewshire Business Network, and I am pleased to say that the enthusiasm has not dimmed. And the mission will continue throughout the week with a range of engagements and activities on the schedule. Ryan Broom, CBC News. The company Home Ownership Providing Energy Inc., or HOPE, is refuting accusations made against it by a caller on a radio program today. The firm says it was informed that unsubstantiated and untrue allegations were made by a person purporting to represent the Barbados Contractors and Artisans Cooperative Society Limited. HOPE stressed that it has always conducted its business dealings with integrity and will take action against anyone who continues to malign the reputation and integrity of the company or its people. We're back after the break with more news. Barbados has welcomed the historic deal struck at COP27 in Egypt to create a loss and damage fund to assist countries impacted by climate change. Barbados's ambassador extraordinary and plenipotentiary for climate change, Elizabeth Thompson, sees the decision as a significant move forward. Barbados Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley has been among the several Caribbean leaders pushing for such a fund for countries on the front line. The fund will ensure developed nations compensate vulnerable countries for losses from climate change. Speaking at the wrap of the conference, Ambassador Thompson says the journey has been a long one. When we came here, there was a great chasm, a philosophical chasm on how we would approach the issues, particularly in relation to loss and damage. I want to thank all those countries on both sides of the divide who took the leap that we could get something into this text after 30 years of struggle on this issue of loss and damage. It is a significant move forward. There have been complaints that the text is not perfect, and indeed, Mr. President, it is not. There is much that I could put on the list, but will not at this hour because I accept that we have all moved forward. Member of Parliament for St. Thomas, Cynthia Ford, believes the Alma Paris School served a purpose and its closure has disadvantaged many young boys. She has cautioned society against shutting out boys who are not intellectuals. Ms. Ford, an educator, says these late developers need the guidance. The St. Thomas MP's comments came during the reopening of Celestine's restaurant in St. Thomas over the weekend. What we are seeing unfolding minute after minute, it is heart-wrenching. They don't have to be our boy children that are being slaughtered. They don't have to be our girl children who are breaking, breaching every rule and making the police work harder. That's not the reason why Yuling retired. She retired because she reached that age. But the point I'm making is we as communities can do more by hand-holding, lifting up, nurturing, and making the difference by giving these young people some hope that there is going to be something good coming out of what they do, even if it is digging wells or reading the road, because some of us look down on them. Police officers in Barbados are saying times have changed and they must be creative with their strategies. Assistant Commissioner of Police with Responsibility for Administration, Jefferson Clark, told officers policing initiatives must remain relevant and effective. I challenge you today to be constantly seeking to improve yourselves. That means daily interrogating yourselves to ensure that you become the very best version of yourself. But more importantly, that you are adaptable. This means altering your well-thought-out plans from time to time. Mr. Clark's comments came during the 2022 awards ceremony at the police band headquarters, where over 100 from their ranks were recognized for their service. 125 awards, including Barbados Service Medals and Commendation Awards, were presented. Commissioner of Police Richard Boyce impressed on the officers to continue to give of their best. Mr. Boyce says honor, duty and service are dear to the service. For those who may ease up, it is for the strong ones to hold on to them, move them forward, pull them up, carry them on your shoulders, carry them on your arms, wherever or whatever you have to do, you must do it. 
But the goodness of it is when you reach the end of the line. That is when you have achieved your goals, when you have not given up, when you understand what is required of each and every member of your organization. Those are all things that we cherish. Those are all things that we have to go back doing. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Transport, Works and Water Resources, Santia Bradshaw, says Harris Paints has played a pivotal role in assisting government in capturing the colorful landscape of, and history of Barbados. Addressing the 50th anniversary dinner at the Sandals Royal Resort last evening, she said this was accomplished by a strong work ethic, using paint to enrich the lives of the people. Trevor Thorpe was there. The minister said the initiative was the catalyst for change as it uplifted the lives of the most vulnerable in society. The concept of the outreach that then took place made Harris Paints have a connection to the ordinary person. You know, when I look at the little man, I smile because what the little man means to Harris Paints has a different connotation for the people in my community because this little man represented them. But you as an entity was able to make them feel empowered by being the little man that was able to bring color and to enrich their lives through color in the community. Company chairman Robert Jones told the ceremony, numbers have significance, but the milestone was more than just a birthday party. We have come a long way, and that has been a result of the labor of many over a long time. There is no doubt that we can and should take pride, pride in our achievements and hope that it might provide inspiration to a new generation of Barbadian entrepreneurs. However, I am a firm believer that the how is often more important than the what. And as a result, I am proud of the way we have developed our business over 50 years. Chief Executive Officer Ian Canyon, before announcing Don Gooding as the winner of the Leader of the Year Award, told the audience the company has a bright and colorful future. He demonstrated unbelievable leadership in implementing the rollout of the Alpha Tinting Machines and the One Base Tinting System across the four very different cultures of Antigua, Barbados, Jamaica and Guyana for May 2020 onwards. Nothing seemed to stop Don, not COVID, not hurricanes or other acts of God, not even the Jamaican retailers who wanted machines on the second floor of their stores. Leadership at its very best, because often Don was having to lead upwards in terms of leading senior members of our suppliers, our customers, and also me. During the celebrations, sections of the building was named in honor of founders Mickey Hutchinson, Andrew Phillips and Ralph Johnson, while the Research and Development Lab was named in honor of the company's principal technical architect, Charles Curtin. Trevor Thorpe, CBC News. Thanks, Trevor. A government MP sees generational links as critical to the success of black-owned businesses in Barbados. MP for St. Thomas, Cynthia Ford, wants those owners to hold the hand of the youth and give them a chance to leave a mark. She has welcomed the reopening of the popular Celestine restaurant in Allenview, St. Thomas, where Tyrell Giles has taken over its operations from his grandmother and owner Celestine Giles. The restaurant is located near the Harrison's Cave, and Ms. Ford sees the business as a training ground through which children can improve their quality of life. Because when you look, they're persons of another ethnic view, um, group who are expanding because that is the kind of training they have had. The children are in the shop dispatching, and we call it dispatching, just as it did when Miss Morgan and Miss Hurdle and Miss Ursil and all of those had their shops in existence in this community. Even Mrs. Carrington, we call her daughter, lived opposite us. She had her own little shop. And Ken Moore, now deceased, may the Lord bless him in his grave, he had to help to dispatch, to wrap up, to, to make the change, whatever. We have pulled our children out of the houses because we're talking a lot about free education, not acknowledging that that is the training ground or the conduit through which our children can become entrepreneurs, accountants. The businessman, Tyrell Giles, intends to work to help develop the St. Thomas community. He is confident the business, Celestines, can play a part. It will be a soft spot for sure. Uh, every Saturday we will be here. 
Um, I think that we need South Coast at Harrison's Cave. No longer, no longer do we need to travel down the road. <laughs> but indeed, it, it's time that we as St. Thomas come together as one, whether it be Bryan, Sturges, uh, Welch Mahal itself, Hopewell, Bridgefield. It's time that we recognize that St. Thomas is just one place and we need to treat it as such. All right, time to head back on over to Sean in the sports studio for the second half in sports. Well, thank you, Shane. Barbados has captured their first medal of the inaugural IR Central American and Caribbean Beach Games in Santa Marta, Colombia. Wrestler Ruben Wilcher claimed the bronze medal in the men's up to 90 kg category. Seen here in the blue and yellow shorts, he competed against the eventual winner, Pedro Francisco Cibala Fuentes of Venezuela, in the semifinal bouts where he lost 3 0 on technical points. Wilcher, however, went on to beat Panama's Elton. Brown Morris 3-1 to one on technical points in the bronze medal bout to secure the island's first piece of hardware. Well, Barbados is also represented at the games in sailing, surfing, beach volleyball and open water swimming. Back to news of cricket, West Indies Test captain Craig Brathwaite says that getting used to pink ball conditions in Australia will be key ahead of their two-test series against Australia later this week. Now, Brathwick spoke to the media ahead of their second and final warm-up match against the Prime Minister's eleven in Canberra starting tomorrow night. Yeah, I think we had a, had a good first, you know, first three-day game. And the second game, obviously, is a different team, uh, you know, a much more competitive team. So, you know, we, we look forward to that challenge and obviously gearing towards, you know, the first test. Obviously, it's a pink ball game this, so, you know, it'd be good to, you know, to get used to the pink ball and you know and the conditions here in Australia. Well obviously as bowlers, you know, it would it would be, react different, you know, off the surface, especially especially when the lights, you know, lights turn on. So I think that's something we've got to be aware of both as a bowling unit and a batting unit. Um, but yeah it tends to do a, a lot more at, at night. Um, so that's just something we gotta you know, we gotta keep in our keep in our minds. Now, Brathwood added that his batsmen shouldn't get too worked up by the pink ball during that day-night encounter. He sees it as just another game of cricket. What I mean is, is, is a cricket game. You know, it's, it's always about, you know, as batsmen, you know, keeping out the good balls and, and putting away the bad balls. So we, we just got to keep it simple and let's look to enjoy our, our, our time and, and games here. Louis Eswick won the men's 50-meter prone on day one of the Barbados Rifle and Pistol Federation annual championships. This was at the Waterford Range. After the first six series, Eswick accumulated a total of 697.5 and then shot a 101.5 in the final to beat out Javid Benjamin with 100.9 and Marlon Best with 99.4. In the women's 50-meter prone, Monica Ramsey won with 94.9 in the final over Tessa Mears. The other event contested on day one was the female 10 meter air rifle, which was won by Devine Narayim, who accumulated 592.1 over the six series ahead of Camaro Williams and Brodella Ramshire. And uh, Dominus, ridden by Ray Williams, put in another dominant performance in the Francis Cozier Memorial BTBA Breeders Sprint Stakes and Trophy over the weekend when the Barbados Thoroughbred Breeders Association Race Day took center stage at the Garrison Savannah. It is Dominus who's going to be the first to show. Semprify is in second. In third position, moving in nicely now is the court, followed by Trojan and Joshua. That's the way they race as they go down the back stretch. And it is Dominus in front by just about two lengths. Along the rails is Semprify. Then comes Trojan. The court is between horses and Joshua is up with them as they go up the hill. And it is still Dominus in front, just by about a length and a half from Semprify who moves into second position. In third is the code, followed by Trojan and Joshua. That's the way the quintet races as they go, be to, go to the two full-on pole. And it is still Dominus very, very handily. Semprify is in second. Also, here comes the code. Um, Trojan is at the back of affairs as they turn for home. And it is Dominus very easily. He is in front. He is by about two or three lengths, getting a crack. In second position is the code who's running on. But they're all going to run for second, third, or fourth. But there's no doubt about the winner, 
Dominus very easily indeed wins it by about three lengths from the code. In third position was Joshua, then Semper Fi and Trojan in 105 and 3. That's our news. Good night and be good. Thanks for visiting us. To get more stories like this one, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.